Hello everyone. It's been an amazing journey for me, uh, going from an orthodontist to a climate change crusader. Uh, and this journey really started off where I hail from a small town in Karnataka, a temple town called Karkala. My initial climate change passion came from this little town because I was so influenced by the simplistic town life that uh, this place had to offer. So I finished, I graduated my dentistry from Manipal, uh, mastered my art of dentist, uh, orthodontics in Daungire, and I started practicing dentistry in, in Bangalore. And this went on for about 15 years until like an alarm clock ringing constantly, I had an awakening. The climate change bug really bit me and really hard. Uh, you know, reading has always been my passion because for medical you will have to read a lot of books, textbooks. And uh, this hobby actually became, uh, I got into a research frenzy. I started reading about the environment. I started visiting a lot of wildlife and nat uh, national parks across the country. And I was really astonished to see that such beauty existed in our country and what we could do to preserve this beauty for future generations. And particularly, I was deeply inspired by a lot of environmentalists who were, of course, doing their little bit to uh, make this place a much better, you know, better world to live in. But then as I looked around, uh, in spite of uh, multiple climate accords, you know, uh, a lot of summit declarations, really there was not much that was happening in the pollution space, particularly vehicular pollution and industrial pollution. So, you know, and I was sick of pointing fingers at others and saying, you know, nothing is happening here. So I said, what is it that I can do as an entrepreneur to bring about some innovative solutions to this particular space? Uh, an entrepreneur's journey is never easy. It's full of hurdles and sometimes a lot of missteps. Uh, my journey also was that. It was not a very smooth sailing journey. And I learned through this journey a lot of valuable lessons. Uh, the first and most valuable lesson is that if your idea is good, it needs to have good legs to stand on. And for every passionate environmentalist, the bottom line is very, very important. If it is not an... Uh, economically viable solution, it's not going to pass the test of time. So I explored various avenues. And like all doctors, we are all hardwired to get down to the root cause of the problem, uh, what we call as diagnosis. So I started figuring out what is it that this pollution can, vehicular pollution, particularly because I took that as a a problem statement for myself. What is it that I could do to kind of minimize that or at least, you know, uh, bring about some, of, some sort of abatement in this? So I started visiting a lot of automotive exhibitions, uh, conferences, just to acquaint myself about this matter. And that's when uh, an accidental meeting with my future partner, uh, Claudio, who was an Italian researcher and scientist. Uh, in Dubai, we met up and, you know, our kind of passions aligned together. And uh, we kind of cooked up a, a game-changing uh, solution, which was to manufacture uh, what, what is called as uh, emissions-reducing solution in containerized skid-mounted units. Now, if you remember, uh, India was still in the Bharat 4 stage of emission standards, whereas Europe had already graduated to uh, Euro 6. And 
Popularly there, the product was called as AdBlue. And it was all happening in a centralized manufacturing, well-established, big player market. We wanted to really disrupt this particular market and make it more affordable and bring down this emission solution accessible and to smaller cities. And that's exactly what we did. If you see here, you know, these are 40 foot containers, completely automated, and it could produce about 150,000 liters a day, approximately about 40 million liters a year. And the impact on the environment was huge. You had almost about 90% of uh, NOx emissions that were abated by this particular solution. And we had made it affordable, at the same time scalable. We ended up putting about six or seven machines across the country and produced close to about 200 to 250 million liters a year. You can imagine how much of carbon dioxide, particulate matter, and NOx emissions are being abated every single year as we speak. And I'm happy to say that I played a small part in this particular journey. But uh, my journey did not stop here. I said, what more can we do to sort of make this even more, make the air around us a lot more cleaner? We came up with a, a more cutting edge solution. Uh, making cryogenic LNG tanks or for transportation for long range uh, you know, commercial vehicles. As you all know that LNG is one of the most cleanest of fossil fuels that's available today. And until the time that uh, the greener fuels are going to transition in the future, uh, we felt that this could be a good solution because it would not only make the air uh, that much more cleaner, but also with a single fill of LNG, these trucks could travel thousands of kilometers without having to refill at a particular location. And of course, the impact on the environment was enormous. Some studies show that uh, you have close to about 92 to 95 percent of uh, abatement that happens uh, from an NOx em emission perspective. Uh, not only did we, were we successful in trying out this, uh, but we also wanted to go a step further. Because by then, I think I had become uh, a sucker for technology. And I said, what is it that we could do to make it more uh, cleaner? And then we stuck upon what is called as an electrolyzer. Most of you who have gone through chemistry classes, you know, 11th and 12th know that, you know, you have cathode and anode put in a solution and then you pass electric current and then you have a chemical reaction that happens, right? So it is the intricate placement of cathode and anode placed in a certain uh, arithmetic fashion and then you pass current through it and if that current is from a green source, a renewable source like solar or wind or for that matter hydropower, then the hydrogen that is generated from an electrolyzer is called as green hydrogen. And today green hydrogen has become the buzzword in India because uh, all of a sudden we have realized you know, just as a matter of statistics, India imports close to about 200 to 220 billion dollars of fossil fuels from overseas market. Now, just imagine the scenario by 2030, we would have changed the portfolio of our energy mix, we would have become energy independent, and from a net importer of fossil fuels, we would actually become a net exporter of energy. How cool would that be for our country? And the basic building block for all this is electrolyzer. So the impact of electrolyzers on the environment is, uh, is massive. I mean, you have completely zero emissions. 
For example, in the mobility sector, if you take a hydrogen vehicle and uh, you combust the hydrogen through fuel cells, all you get from the tailpipe is simple, pure water. So there is virtually no emissions at all. So we went from a little emissions to lesser emissions to no emissions at all. And that really should be our journey uh, in terms of transitioning from one technology to another because that is how uh, you know we are creating not only a solution that is here to stay but a solution that kind of evolves over time. I have just put a chart here just to show you the various uses of hydrogen uh, that can be uh, useful for our country not only the mobility, mobility sector but also in the industrial sectors, the cement plants, the iron and steel industry, uh, it can also be blended with natural gas for uh, gas pipelines and uh, most importantly for making a lot of green fuels like green ammonia, sustainable aviation fuel. Do you know that uh, in the years to come you will probably have what is called as sustainable aviation fuel that will be used for aircrafts. And what is the, the raw material for that? Simple water using electrolyzers. So in conclusion, I would like to say that uh, while an entrepreneur's journey is a difficult one filled with lot of hurdles, it has been a rather interesting journey for me. I have enjoyed every twists and turns that this journey has taken me. Uh, but at the heart of it is technology. I have embraced technology and I hope to continue to uh, bring in new innovative technologies, indigenize it and bring it to scale for the better good of our country and the world at large. Thank you very much.